For instance, of a liquid with high velocity, let's say a regurgitant or stenotic blood jet, or the water jet coming out of a garden hose. Does it have high or low pressure? Many of you may be thinking that a jet has high pressure, but the jet has low pressure, as it will be demonstrated later. Why do we think it has a high pressure? The reason for this misconception it's simple. It's because we see the force of a jet, like a jet of water of a garden hose. In your experience, since childhood, you have learned that a high velocity jet of water that hits you will hurt you. You've seen a water jet being used for cleaning, and this may be interpreted as, as, as it having a high pressure. But force is not the same as pressure, as we will see later. Another question I make. A regurgitant or stenotic jet, has it a laminar or turbulent flow? You probably will think it's turbulent, but it's not turbulent. The jet is laminar. Why would you think it is turbulent? Probably because you've seen color Doppler and people will tell you this is a turbulence of a mitral regurgitation. Then you'd think that the jet is turbulent, but it's not turbulent. The jet is laminar. The turbulence you are seeing in the color Doppler is around the jet. The jet itself is laminar. A laminar flow means that all red blood cells are moving in one single direction. Just like in the jet of water, for sure all molecules of water have a single direction. A turbulent flow would have molecules of water going in all directions, including contrary to the flow with different velocities. The jet is absolutely laminar. All molecules of water or if it were blood, all red cells would be moving in a single direction. It is not turbulent. The turbulence has another cause. As this jet continues and it has low pressure, as we are going to show later, it propagates in a medium that has a pressure greater than inside the jet. In the case here, the atmospheric pressure is greater than the jet. Then the molecules of air or the blood cells, if it were the case are pulled to the interior of the jet. Some may enter the jet and then it gradually enlarges as seen here. Some hit the jet in an angle contrary to its direction and they are not able to enter it. That makes the molecules of air or the red cells to spin around the jet in all directions and velocities. That is the turbulence. Then the jet is laminar. The turbulence is around the jet. Let me ask you some questions. Just answer right or wrong. First, the blood flows from point A to point B because the pressure in A is greater than B. Is it right or wrong? I believe most of you will say it's right. Now, the blood cannot flow from A to B if the pressure in B is greater than A. Right or wrong? I believe most of you will say it's right. Another question. Bernoulli effect says that the greater the gradient, the greater the velocity of flow. In other words, it is the gradient between two points, A and B, that produces a velocity of blood according to the equation G equals 4 times Vmax squared. Right or wrong? I believe most of you will say it's right. But as we're going to see, all these affirmations are wrong. Many years ago, there was a TV advertisement here in Brazil of a biscuit cracker named Tostines. And it said, uh, and I quote, the Tostines cracker sells much more because they are fresh or they are fresh because they sell much more. Now let's see the Tostines effect in hemodynamic. And I ask you, the pressure gradient between two points in the circulation produce a certain velocity of blood flow or a certain blood flow velocity produces a certain gradient. In other words, is the gradient that produces a velocity or is the velocity that produces a gradient? I believe that most of you will say that is the gradient that produces a certain velocity and not the other way around. But here too, this answer is wrong. It is a velocity of the fluid that produces a gradient. You will see that here are some known universal laws, the laws of conservation. The, the law of mass conservation says in hemodynamic it would be like the volumetric 
flow that enters in a tube has to be the same that runs out of the tube. It's a kind of Lavoisier's law. Another law of conservation is the energy conservation. It says, the total of all forms of energy in a closed system is a constant. There is also another law of conservation, the momentum conservation. It says that the total of the momentum, and the momentum here is not time, okay? Momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. So the, the momentum conservation says the total of the momentum in a closed system is a constant. This is our friend Bernoulli and his complicated equation relating pressure and velocity of a fluid. Here enters variables as fluid density and others that don't interest us right now. Then, if you take only the important variables concerning blood as the fluid and the blood in circulation, this equation becomes the known G or gradient equals 4 times V max velocity, maximum velocity. The Bernoulli principles states that as the speed of a moving fluid increases, the pressure within the fluid decrease. What we see here is the Bernoulli experience explained. Here is a hydrodynamic flow. We see the pressure curve along the tube. Flow rate of this fluid along the tube. The circular area of the tube. You can see that from here the area increases and the velocity decreases. What happens if we make an obstruction here? Notice that the volumetric flow does not change. To maintain the mass conservation law when it reaches an obstruction, there is only one way to do it, increasing the velocity of flow. The same volume of flow that is going through here has to go through here and there. Then what happens if that the velocity of flow in the direction of obstruction has to increase as the area decreases for the sake of mass conservation law? And after the obstruction, the velocity decreases as the area increases. The increased velocity of in the obstruction is due to mass conservation law. But now we have another law that has to be conserved, the conservation of energy law. If the kinetic energy increases to conserve the mass, it means an increase of velocity in this region. Then it is necessary that another form of energy decrease, and the energy that decreases here is the pressure. Notice that the peak of the pressure drop is at the peak of velocity flow. The total energy is conserved, hence the flow rate, that means the velocity multiplied by the area, remains the same. The mass is conserved. Watch now what happens after the obstruction. As the area increases after the obstruction, the velocity has to decrease to conserve the mass. And as the velocity decreases, the pressure increases according to the law of energy conservation. Watch that the blood is going from a region of low pressure and high velocity to a region of low velocity and high pressure. In other words, it's going against a pressure gradient. See that our initial reasoning did not take in consideration the variables that we know now. The molecules containing in a certain volume of fluid hitting the wall of the container is the reason for the pressure. But as the fluid moves, many molecules are going in the direction of the movement. And these molecules is not hitting any wall. It is just moving. And its energy now is not as pressure, but as velocity. This is why the jet has low pressure. You see that if you don't know all the variable, our logic or our reasoning don't show us the reality. This is the same reason why the airplane flies. To conserve the mass, the air has to go faster in the upper curved region of the wing than in the lower straight part of it. But when the air velocity increases, the pressure decreases to conserve energy. Then there is less pressure on the top of the wing than in in its bottom and the airplane moves up. Then, when we see a jet like this mitral regurgitation, we know that the maximal velocity is in the area of maximal obstruction, where it has the smaller area, the so-called the vena contracta. The question is, what makes the jet stop? Why is it getting larger after the obstruction until its velocity returns to normal and the jet ends? Does it get larger because its velocity is getting slower or it gets slower because it gets larger? Other, there is no relation between velocity and width of the jet.
In reality, the jet gets larger, and because it gets larger, its velocity decreases until it stops. Why is that? Because of other conservation law that we have not talked yet, the conservation of momentum. Notice that a jet has a high velocity than a low pressure. When the jet enters a cavity with higher pressure, the blood cells are pushed toward the jet. Some enter the jet and the mass of the jet increases. As the mass increases, the momentum conservation law says that the mass time velocity has to be conserved. If the mass increases, the velocity has to decrease and the jet will gradually stop. The blood cells that hit the jet but don't enter it due to the angle in relation to the direction of the jet will spiral and rotate and turn around the jet causing red cells in all directions and velocities. In other words, a turbulent flow. Notice that the turbulent flow is around the jet, but the jet is laminar until it finishes due to its mass increase. Now check the film again and answer the questions knowing the new variable. You will see that once new variables enters our reasoning, our common sense may be wrong.